So I want to go through and show how we can adjust firewall rules for our SQL Azure databases. I have a SQL Azure database connected, and one of the things I see here is I can go ahead and put in my server name. I can specify SQL authentication, put in my username and password, and when I go to connect, one thing it'll tell me is that I can't open a uh, guy in a cube as requested by the login because the client IP address is not allowed to access the server. This means that we are blocked by the firewall, so we haven't enabled a firewall rule uh, for our SQL Azure database itself. So what do we do here? Uh, one thing we can do is we've got the, we can go to the portal and we can actually go do that. So what we're looking at here is the, uh, is the existing portal and what functionality it has here. You can do it through here. So down under Quick Lance, you can, uh, we can go to Manage Allowed IP Addresses. Yeah, this will take you to the Configure tab. And in here, we can, it'll tell us what our current client IP address is, and we can just add that. So we can add this, give it a rule name, and then we can add um, the IP address for both the start and the end, or we can just say, hey, add the allowed IP address here. Um, so that will allow us to connect successfully uh, from that standpoint. Uh, the other thing is we have the new preview portal. So the preview portal here, uh, we can do the same thing. So we can see my database here. If you don't see it on your dashboard, we can go to browse. And if we scroll down, you'll see recent up top if you've been there. Otherwise, you'll see SQL servers down here below. And within the SQL server, we can go in to the one that we want access to. And in here, we can go to settings, and we can go to firewall. One thing to realize with the new portal is that it expands to the right, and there's a scroll bar down below that you can go back and forth. Uh, so from this standpoint, it's the same thing. So we've got a rule name, we've got a start IP and an end IP. The one thing we don't have here is it's not gonna show you your existing IP address, um, and it's not gonna allow you to just add that IP address into the rule. So let's go back here, and we can just grab that. And we can call it client, go to start, and we'll give it an end. And I just click down in the right area, and now this IP address is added, and we can save. And it says, okay, we were successful. So if we go back to Management Studio and we try it again, we should be able to connect. And we can. And so that's how we can adjust the firewall to allow client machines into it. If we don't have that, um, if the firewall rules aren't enabled, you'll see the errors like you saw. Um, and at that point, it's just a matter of just configuring within the portal uh, to give whatever machine's trying to access it uh, allowed access into that. You will need to know the IP address though. Um, so you can do, you can get that IP address through multiple ways. Uh, you can, you saw it in the existing portal. It will show you that if you log into the portal from the machine that's trying to hit it or from the machine itself, just go to whatismyip.com and it will tell you what the actual external IP address is for that client, not your internal address, but what it's going to hit Azure with. Um, and that's what needs to be allowed. Okay. So we looked at the portal, both the existing portal and the new preview portal for managing uh, your firewall rules for SQL Server, uh, for SQL Azure databases. And so what I wanna also look at is why, what else can we do besides the portal? What if the portal's not available? What else can we do? So the first thing that we'll look at, I'm not gonna necessarily go through this, but there is store procedures that are available uh, within your database that you can do this. SP set firewall rule is one of these. And this has the context of doing this within the master database. So if your account doesn't have access to master, then this won't work for you. So, but this is an option for you. So the other thing we can do is to use PowerShell to modify these. So I'll look, we'll look through a couple of these. One is a get, one's new, uh, one is remove, and the other one is uh, the set, which will update an existing rule. So if we go to, so if we go to our PowerShell, one thing we can do is we can do a get help to list out which ones are available for us. And we can see the options here for get, new, remove, and set. Um, they all have the word rule on the end of it, which you can't see right there. And so the, the first thing we wanna do is, let's take a look at 
what rules do we currently have in place. And the only rule we see here right now is the allow all Windows Azure IPs. Um, and that's anytime you see the 0000 to the zero range, that's for any of our Windows Azure IPs. So we can see this in the portal. Also, if we go to the firewall settings and we see this allow access to Windows Azure services, when that's turned on or off, when it's turned on, you're going to see that rule listed there. When it's off, that means this rule is not there. So you could remove that and this would be set to off at that point. Um, so this will list out everything that you have. So what I want to do though is add a rule for my client machine that I'm on right now. The thing to realize is that it's not going to be like if I were to do an IP config and see my IP address, that's my local IP address. What I really need is the IP address that's going to hit uh, Windows Azure with. So I need my external IP address. So if you don't know what that is, uh, the old existing portal actually would tell you what it is. Uh, the preview portal doesn't tell you what it is. So one thing you can do is you can go to whatismyipaddress.com and it will tell you what your IP address is. Um, the other thing you can do is if you go to speedtest.net, you'll see it there as well in the lower uh, corner there. So those are a couple different ways to get your, um, what your actual IP address is. So if we go, let's go ahead and add a firewall rule. And we'll add it for my, for my address. And there it is, and it tells you what it is. And then we can go back and do a list of what we have. And we can see that both rules are there now. If we go back to the portal, and we go back and get the list of the firewall items, you'll see now that the one we just added in PowerShell is available for us too. So those are all options that we can do. Uh, one is, you know, we've got the existing portal, we've got the preview portal, we've got uh, store procedures that are available for us to do that within SQL's context, and then we've got uh, PowerShell to go and enable those. All right.